What's going on? It's your boy Duan Barino from Not Just Music Podcast. Thank you for joining us another week. Let's go. Goes. What's going on, everybody? Not Just Music Podcast. Another homicide edition. Duan Barino, yeah, Quincy yeah. Murdoch in the building. Yeah, um, yeah. It's another week to get on topics that, of course, express a lot of black history. Right, right. Keeping it black, blackity black, you know. First off, I hope all of you are blessed though. Um, again, um, it's June is June is slowly approaching. I know a lot of kids are already out of school. Some kids are getting ready to get out of school, and summertime is quickly and vastly to begin. Um, twenty twenty four. And a new 2024 going in 2025 school, you'll be starting shortly, of course. Right. Um, but of course, uh, on top of this, on top of school being out, being able to still learn some stuff is always key. So this is something that'll be just consistently being done. Nobody has to worry about going to look for this or if school will be out or not. This is definitely going to be going on. All right. Come on, headphones down. All right. Picking up from where I've been going. Um, of course, I've been deep in Rosenwald schools. I'm going to slightly step away from that today, but of course, I'm still going to speak on somebody that's in the Carolina Steel. That person I'm going to be speaking on today is Harriet Ann Jacobs. Harriet Ann Jacobs was born 18 in 1813 in North Carolina, in Edenton, North Carolina, to be exact. And she died March 7th, 19, 1897, in Washington, D.C., at the age of 84. Her most notable works are Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, which was written by herself. Um, of course, there's a couple more, but that was probably her most notable work. I've actually had the chance to like put my hands on it and actually like read it um, over the past few weeks. Right. Um, it's really a really a really a not opening situation. Um, shows a lot of courage. Shows a lot. Shows a lot of hope. Um. She actually had her hands in a lot of stuff that probably people wouldn't even. I mean, we always heard of Harriet Tubman, but we didn't hear Harriet Jacobs. Um, just pointing out facts of showing, like I always say, people, there's a lot of history that we don't even really know about. And people have probably never heard of until we start searching and doing research on things um, to see who had something to do with, you know, ancestors, ancestors that had something to do with why we are in the position we are today. Like I said, we always talk about Martin. We always talk about Malcolm. We always talk about Harry Tubman. We talk about, I mean, people, like I said, those are the pinnacle people that they always speak of, but they never speak on every single person. But again, Jacobs was born into enslavement, was taught to read at an early age. She was orphaned as a child and formed a bond with her maternal grandmother. Molly Horn Horny Blow, who had formerly been enslaved. Beginning in 1825, Jacob's enslaver repeatedly sexually harassed and abused her. While in her teens, she gave birth to two children, fathered by a neighbor, Samuel Treadwell Sawyer, a young white lawyer. When she refused to become her enslaver's concubine, she was sent to work on a nearby plantation in an effort to remove her children from her enslaver's control. Jacobs fled and spent the next seven years in hiding. Meanwhile, her children were bought, bought by their father and later sent to the north. Um, after, it, after escaping to the north in 1842, Jacobs worked as a nursemaid in New York and eventually moved to Rochester, New York to work in the anti-slavery reading room above abolitionist Frederick Douglass uh, for his newspaper, The North Star. 
um, during an abolitionist lecture tour with her brother, Jacobs began her lifelong friendship with the Quaker reformer, Amy Post. Post, among others, encouraged Jacobs to write the story of her enslavement. Um, Self-published in 1861, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl is arguably the most comprehensive slave narrative written by a woman. Um, before I stop, let me keep reading. Writing as Linda, writing as Linda Brent Jacobs, Linda Brent Jacobs detailed the sexual abuse of enslaved women and the anguish felt by enslaved mothers who frequently experienced the loss of their children. She explained her purpose in the book, in the book's preface. I have to read this. Um, and this is as much as I'm going to read of this book, because in case uh, y'all have to go read this on your own, it's really that deep. It's, it could be a whole 20 podcast by its own self. I do earnestly desire to arouse the women of the North to realize a sense of the condition of two millions of women at the South still in bondage, suffering what I suffered, and most of them far worse. I want to add my testimony to that of Abler Pins to convince the people of the free states what slavery really is. Only by experience can anyone realize how deep and dark and foul it it foul is that pit of abominations. Now I'm gonna pause now. Now this is what I want to talk about with her one one angle of being a black woman. Um, even before the 1900s got here, um, I spoke on this other week. You talk about a time frame when slaves were mistreated. There was only a certain time frame where where you hear about slaves that were really being taken care of. You heard mm -hmm. about it, taking advantage of that is. You heard about it in the early 1900s and maybe going into the teens of the early 1900s, 20s and 30s. Excuse me. A lot of people probably never knew that, you know, a lot of their ancestors, and I'm speaking of white America, white America probably didn't even know a lot of their white ancestors had infatuations with black women, um, which, which is considerably one of the most underlooked things that I feel that slavery you you don't want to hear people speak on mm -hmm. if you read this book though it's gonna set your mind straight I don't know how into reading people are these days but if anybody if you have a heart to understand, if you have a heart to learn, if you have a heart to what black people and the mixed position of black, the black white child, it changes the whole entire, if any, especially black women, if you right. ever get the chance, especially, and this is speaking to those who don't know and understand the true situation of the mixed children and how mixed children are a lot of ancestors to some people who consider themselves to be black on quote black on black but they're right. really not and to see and read some of the mess that was going on it'll 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 tear your mind apart man honestly it's not like tearing your mind apart in the sense of you, you won't you, you can't think of anything else but you can't think of anything else once you read this book you would think of what it meant then to me now why black women have the feelings the emotions and the anger the way they do now it kind of makes sense you know it, it's a, a lot of that stuff is slightly hereditary and then to see the case of what the white men 
were doing and telling the white and telling the white men's story and the white man's story and unfolding it the way that she did um takes a lot of courage um <laughs> you talking about right before the 1900s like she did a tell all before she died and you know shout out to the lady that gave her that that confidence to do so i mean you talk you talk about something that we didn't overlooked for a hundred years right uh and, and something that was probably even going on before so before then and then finally this one brave woman decides to speak up on it and it is it's a very 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 encouraging thing to you know look into but again the book incidents in the life of a slave girl uh, was rediscovered in the 1960s during the american civil rights movement it was often attributed to lydia marie child who was named as the book's editor on its title page and was considered a work of fiction but in the 18 but in the 1980s the scholar gene fagan yellen verified it as jacob's own work um incidents in the life of a slave girl again was written by herself um and it's considerably an autobiography autobiography narrative that was published by Harry Jacobs again just so people understand that and she is from North Carolina this is NC born and raised you know? is she from North Carolina what part of North Carolina uh, yeah Eid let me see make sure I say it the correct way again Edenton, 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 -E Edenton, North Carolina. Okay, okay. Which is exactly, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's where is that at on the map? I think it's like closer to. Lee you said e what? What you say? Edenton, 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 Edenton. Edenton, 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 Edenton. Edenton. Yeah. I ain't never heard of it. Yeah. I ain't never heard. And she is located. Let me see. I see it now. It is basically it's 262 miles from where I'm at. But to be exact, let me see what it's closest to. And it is near. Wow, they put it. Yeah, basically going towards the squat towards the coast, but towards Virginia way. All right, all right. Um, it's like literally on Highway 17, but it's on the coast. Which lets you know that, of course, during that time, a lot of us were, you know, that's the only thing we could make it into was to the coast. And then they'll sell you off it on the coast. But it lets you know North Carolina probably has something to do with pushing slaves through here as well. We just don't know the true, 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 true history of it. Um, right. But, you know, this is, I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask this question. Um, as a young adolescent, when you were young, could you ever picture yourself in a position where you don't have control of anything in your life that you do? Only thing you could do is basically get up, you know, and go straight to work for a, a slave master, a slave owner, right? right? right. And right. you don't you don't have a thing of saying this is you 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 can say it's a job, but in yeah. a sense you're in a sense working to keep your life safe you know to stay alive um in the most serious way because i mean you think about it think about a black person black america uh, uh they bringing these blacks in and they got to find and, and deal and deal on their own like running from you know different camp to camp and, you know these camps ain't like short they miles and miles and miles away so yeah, yeah. You think about it the mentality of you can imagine how scared a child, a teenager is, right? What do you feel? What do you feel as in your childhood that scared you most? What was something that was scary to you? Because I want to point out a situation yeah, okay. with, with her that she pointed out. I'm gonna point out something that's small, but again, what what just to do a, a comparison, what were you? scared of as a child uh <clears throat> i think what i was more scared about was uh the unknown like not knowing mm -hmm. not knowing things you know uh i wanted to be educated on things 
and most times if i wasn't educated on something i would have to go i was the type of kid that i would want to go out and try it mm. like i like they'd tell me don't put your hand on the stove and i wanted to try it anyway to see if it'll burn me mm. you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. like just not just like knowing not knowing was my fear not mm -hmm. knowing what tomorrow will bring not knowing I, I think a lot of black people can speak for this like you know that it it's accustomed to not knowing if you're going to eat the next day. We're accustomed to not knowing if the lights might not be on tomorrow or, you know, uh, you know, all the struggle. We used to that. You feel me? So I think when it happens like over and over and over again, you kind of get accustomed to it. So my main thing is me, me being a Scorpio. I like knowing I, I just don't like the unknown. I like mm. knowing what's coming. Mm. I like knowing. So, yeah, that would have been a difficult time for me to be living, you know what I'm saying? Slavery and all that, because like, you know, I, I like I like control also. Mm -hmm. And see, that's so, what this is this is the you know part. What I'm that's the part where and we have control, control now. We have control now. Even yeah. though we don't feel that way, we have way more control now than they did back then. You know what I'm saying? So um, you know, I think I think that's important, man, that we we realize that, you know. Cause like you know, and I used to feel like, for example, one thing like how people would complain about child support, for example. And I want to say this because it's big in the black community. Like you know, we used to feel like child support was a hold on us. Child support was a hold, and this and that. But if you think about it, it's not really a hold. It's taking care of your child. If the money is going towards an individual that you created, you know, it's not a hold. You should want to pay. For your child mm. but the thing of it is is when i think the problem is is when when we get the government involved when we get the when we like you know like slavery it slave master was involved like with you know controlling the blacks and stuff like that mm -hmm. it's nothing wrong paying for your kid I, mm -hmm. I i'm all for paying for your child but when you get these white people involved that's where the confusion comes in with the with the families and you know what i'm saying that's what they mm -hmm. there to do is destroy like the slave masters were you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so so it's just it's just a it's just a root of knowing what's right and what's wrong within so we don't have to be controlled or we don't have you know educate ourselves you know most of the, the most of the the, the stories <clears throat> of what i you you speak of and this is this is something that i always say when you're young this is yeah. these are things your mind your mental has to process all the time like what's 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 going to happen right. what's getting ready to happen right and, and and what's next you know right what do i know what have i learned you know a lot of that comes yeah. along with being young and this, this is something that i want to point out about her and and this is something i, I thought about you, you imagine waking up terrified every time you wake up and i'm not speaking of like just waking up terrified every time you wake up meaning those moments when you just wake up in the middle of the night because of a bad dream or you wake up in the middle of the night or in the middle of the morning and and, right. and, and you just get up most cases you know you can get up you ain't got to worry about nothing but right somebody that's a, a a known young lady being raped by these older men um she's scared out her mind she doesn't know when she's going to get raped she doesn't know when she's going to be in that position where she's you know uh uh getting ready to have to stand off with these men and most the unknown cases, right the unknown like we're yeah, talking and, about not and in known. most cases they teach these that's teach worse these. than the actual impact uh that's worse than the actual action is waiting they you knowing it's coming but not knowing but go ahead i'm sorry mm -hmm. yeah definitely no, you could to teach these yeah. to teach a young girl's mind that this this is what's gonna happen all the time like this is, this is norm this is oh oh this is the norm you know you know right. this is how it's supposed to be we supposed to do this to you and and the sad truth is that it is disgraceful you know and can it's i say just, something like yeah. you started out by saying it affect that you see why it affects black women mm -hmm. not just like everything that they went through even black males the black mm -hmm. race in general mm -hmm. everything affects us to this day mm -hmm. even if it didn't personally affect us our great ancestors that went through it 
the trauma yeah, that they dude. went through, the trauma they went through, they probably put it off on their kids. Mm -hmm. So it's a generational thing. So then your mother is pushing it off on you, that mm -hmm. hurt and that pain, mm -hmm. that depression. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a repeated cycle. So that's the problem like like you started out by saying it hurts it hurts mm -hmm. us as a race you know what i'm saying and that's that's the those are the people these are the people why i speak on this i'm not i'm this is not to like bash the entire white community nah. or the white it's american it's the wake us up it's the wake it's, us up it's most for important. the learning process this is a learning process to this stuff and making sure that you understand that everything that you see going on and, and and what's going on and and the mix of mix of you know races and how things are now you know these people fought for this you know not even and it's most importantly it's about identity it's about knowing our identity because mm -hmm. if you if we know our identity that's it that's that's mm -hmm. what they don't want us to know. They don't want us to know who we are as as black people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what it's really about. The blacks, the blacks of um again the early 1900s really understand. Um, a lot of the ones in the late 1800s, a lot of them understand. A lot of them were quiet. A lot of them never said anything. A lot of them were put in the same position that she was as a, as 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 Harriet was as a youngster, um, and you know used. And of course, they were using the young black men too. This was not like nothing new. Use right. their youngness to to get them in the fields, get them working. You know, strong, strong, strong. And they were sleeping with sleeping with masters' wives and all of this. This is this was stuff that was going on. You know, fast forward to the day they use prisons to do that around. You know what I'm saying? It's, they use thing, prisons yeah, to do that. it's it's still going to be recognized as foul play, regardless of. But at the same time, just understand this was part of our black history as well. It was part yeah. of our black history. It was part of our our ancestors' history. Right, um, right. And 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 they their parents and their, the parents before them probably had to deal with it as well. So, you know, the reason I brought this up today, though, was because of the case of a black woman from North Carolina who experienced this and also came out triumphant on top of this because it's always about the light at the end of the tunnel. So. If you do not know, if you have not read, if you would like to read about this lady, this is something that I feel, this is something that I feel a lot of you could really win from. Again, the book is Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. I'll put that up. I'll put the book cover somewhere on the screen. Um, I'll put a picture of her as well. Her name, again, her name is Harriet Jacobs. Harriet Jacobs. Again, we appreciate her. We appreciate her life. Her life was not in vain. Again, it wasn't a thing of that a lot of people knew about. Right. But for the sake of, if you didn't know, here's the chance for you to dig into it and look into it yourself so you can understand. She wrote a lot of, she did a lot of, had a lot of works. And she had a lot of prolific works that were considerably that can lead to something big for black history um, um, unless we find it and, and, and dig this stuff though it'll never be known about and it'll probably go down in history is you know never heard of never seen but again um harriet jacobs we appreciate you flowers in heaven to you for doing what you did to raise the bar for black women today to be inspired to be black writers so black women if you have a story tell your story you never tell your story, story black women. Mean. Yeah, you yeah, never know what your story, story means. Some of you are very quiet. Some tell of you your story. Word, um, said a word about things that have happened to you. So you know, here's your chance today. These days, to, you know, take advantage of these publishing deals that you can get. Like, take advantage of all that stuff. This stuff ain't this. This is for the taking now. Huh? These days, and these women then didn't have this right to do this type of stuff, and and now here's the right to do. And you know, let's make let's make great of it. Let's make big of it. Um, but outside of that, anything else? Anything new? Anything 
announceable. Quincy Murdoch, the movie out everywhere right now. Quincy, well, not everywhere. Quincy Murdoch.com, the movie. Y'all go check that out. Quincy Murdoch.com, the movie. Uh, currently working on uh, number two. Um, any actors, you know what I'm saying? Extras. If you if you if you want to be a, a part, you know, you can uh reach me at Quincy Murdoch 44 at gmail.com. Um, and if you're not even in this film, the future films that I got, I'm just looking for actors, period, to um for future work that I got. Um trying to build a team, a strong team. So uh whatever you do, even if you do music, if you if you act, uh short films, stage plays, musicals, whatever, you know, whatever talent you got. Uh, reach out to me, Quincy Murdoch 44 at gmail.com. Um, you can be very useful, like whatever you do. You know what I'm saying? We can work. We can, there's always some talent needed for something, you know, that I do. So, um, yeah, yeah, people, let's work. And also be sure to check out our website. Um, right, right, right. Everything, subscribe, uh, lock in. Um, of course, there's plenty to do. I always say that it's plenty to look at, it's plenty to grab onto plenty to share um this will be released so this will be a day after thursday when i say this so okay you know check out our newest episode, uh, episode oh yeah hey, them episodes them episodes is some um, some, some great next episodes thing, and next yeah. thing next thing too is that um with with along with that I'm working on a little slight plot twist as well with how i told you how i was doing black history things and and doing some different things that will be coming. I, ha I haven't really mastered the whole thought of it yet, but I have one angle with, with direction, meaning, you know, doing actual skits and learning how to do, learning how to give you history via skits, only, not only just sitting and just reading, you know, from a, from a book or from a, from a, you know, flyer or from the internet or anything like that. Like really, you know, put these, put these things to act into action, put them to work. Um, also, uh, the coming in August, I have a, an, a secondary idea to um, bringing musical aspects into what I do, what we do, and understanding that there are people who can, you know, there are people who can uh, sing. There are people who can rap. There are people who do a lot of things. But the the aspect that I'm gonna bring is going to be very, very, very musical. Um, first guy I've been talking to, just kind of just bumping heads with this. Um, his name is Travis Gray. He's a drummer, and I'm gonna probably bring him in and we'll do like a live sesh where we I unfold with a couple things and understanding and showing his background because I know his background very well, how he was brought up. Um, and his family and, you know, his musical family, musical background, and just thinking about, like I say, just creating, thinking about, like, hey, pulling the live keyboards out and drums out and, like, really putting together a session that's, like, something that's, like, memorable. So just be looking for things to come. Like I said, that'll be August by the time I start doing this. Just get some things together as far as not just music podcast going forward, just right. speaking it into existence again. I'm um, right. not just music podcast is definitely here and definitely here for the taking. I'm gonna work hard right. at this stuff and to make things things better for the black race. Right. I'm Duan Barino, Quincy Murdoch in the building, as always. Um, and we will see you all the next homosode, which will be very soon. Um, again, this is Friday, so look in the very near future, probably be Saturday. Um, look for actually, let me say this now. Saturday, look for a new pod from me um i already have one uploaded i'm gonna go ahead and release it get it out the way because it's strictly black history so be ready for that um just so we can start getting those out as well so i'm tired of hiding all these in in, in the cut I'm just trying to get them out uh i think that's it so again we'll see y'all people's next round all right peace